In this lecture, we want to begin a, an entirely new section on phase diagrams and phase transformations. Uh, and so to begin, we just want to talk about some basic definitions, just uh, very in, uh, introductory uh, comments about phase diagram basics. So the first question about phase diagrams that we want to answer is, what is a phase? Well, a phase is a homogeneous portion of a system that has uniform physical uh, and chemical characteristics. So uh, what does that mean? Well, in the case of a single phase system, we call it a homogeneous system or sometimes we'll call it a solution. It means that there aren't any, there's only one phase in the whole system. So what I'm showing you here, this is actually a um, SEM micrograph of um, uh, pure nickel. So each of these are, you're looking at nickel grains um, and, and there's no phase, right? It's each grain is nickel, just oriented differently, okay? So the phase in this case, if you want, is pure nickel. In contrast, a multiple phase system is called a heterogeneous system. Uh, sometimes it's called a mixture. And what I'm showing you uh, here below is an example of, of a heterogeneous system. So uh, in this case, this is a, a lead tin system. So this is, this is typical of solder. Um, and it's comprised of two phases. We call this dark phase the alpha phase. We call this lighter phase the beta phase. Okay, the components of any phase are the pure metals or compounds that make up the alloy. So uh, in the case of the top, right, the component is just nickel. It's very simple. In the case of the bottom, uh, it's a lead tin alloy. So the components of either phase, uh, of both the alpha and the beta phase are lead and tin, but we don't exactly know the, the composition yet. That's what we define next is the composition. The composition uh, is defined as the relative amount of each of the components. So in the case of alpha, uh, we'd want to know how much lead, how much tin. In the case of beta, we want to know how much lead, how much tin. In the, in the upper uh, picture of pure nickel, it's really straightforward. We know what the composition is. It's 100 weight percent nickel. Okay. Uh, in the case below of the solder, uh, the alpha phase is 18.3 weight percent lead and 82.7 weight percent tin. And the beta phase is 2.2 weight percent lead, 97.8 weight percent tin. Okay? So uh, we'll, we'll talk about how to use, in, 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 in the next lecture, we'll talk about how to use phase diagrams to get the composition of these features. Right now, I just want you to know what the composition means when we, when we talk about it. Okay? So the next, uh, the next term I want to define is microstructure. And uh, microstructure is defined by three features of the, of the material. The first is the phases that are present. So let's go back to our example of the, the lead tin alloy. So in this case, the phases present are the alpha phase and the beta phase. Okay. Then we want to know the proportion of the phases. So that's a little different than the composition, right? The composition was how much lead, how much tin were in the phases. The proportion of the phases is what percentage in this microstructure is alpha, what percentage is beta. And in this particular microstructure, it's 45.2 weight percent alpha and 54.8 weight percent uh, beta. Okay? And the third and final uh, 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 descriptor for microstructure is the morphology. That's, that's simply how the phases are arranged. So we can look at this image and see that the morphology in this case is alternating layers of alpha and beta phases. Other, th other uh, morphologies that we might encounter here is maybe the alpha phase resides as uh, uh, spherical inclusions inside of a beta matrix, for example, right? That would be another example of a different kind of morphology. Okay, so those are the three features of microstructure um, that, that, uh, that, that, these, that need to be described to complete that. Okay, so now I think we're ready to ask the question, uh, what is a phase diagram? So a phase diagram uh, describes the equilibrium phases of a system that's comprised of one or more components. So I'm giving you an example here below of a, a um, uh, sugar water phase diagram. So let's just see what, the, what this looks like. On the x-axis, we have the percent weight percent composition of sugar. So on the left-hand side is pure water. On the right-hand side is pure sugar. And then we have temperature, right? 
And so we want to know the phase of the system. So you can imagine if I put a little bit of sugar in water, um, it dissolves. And, and so the question that that phase diagram is answering is how much can I, how much sugar can I put in the water before it stops dissolving and I have both liquid and solid, uh, a liquid solution with solid sugar. And in this case, uh, at, at some low temperature, that percentage is, you know, a little over 60. We could ask the question, well, what about at 20 degrees C, right? That'd be close to room temperature. How much sugar can we dissolve in water? And it'd be about 65 weight percent. Okay. So uh, this is uh, showing you uh, simply which which phases exist at which temperature and composition. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's go back. We said phase diagrams describe equilibrium phases. What does equilibrium mean? We've talked about it before. I'm going to remind you here again. Uh, equilibrium is simply the state in which the free energy, in the case of this class, we're talking primar primarily about the Gibbs free energy. When that free energy is a minimum uh, under some fixed temperature, pressure, and composition. Okay. Sometimes we'll refer to phase equilibrium, and all that is is equilibrium in a system with more than one phase, okay? All right, something else that's important. Um, oftentimes, systems are going to achieve equilibrium so slowly that it's never achieved in, in practice. And if a system pers persists in this non-equilibrium state, we call that state metastable. Okay, we're going to encounter this throughout this chapter in this class, Sometimes we, we will create states that are, that are not in equilibrium, and anything that's not in equilibrium, we would not expect to find on a phase diagram, right? The phase diagrams describe equilibrium phases. So in particular, when we get to talking about the iron carbon phase diagram for steel, we'll talk about states in steel that are metastable, and they won't appear on the phase diagram, okay? So I want you to be aware of that. I want you to be aware of the terminology that describes that. So those are metastable states. So those are states that, that exist, we will see them, but they, are, they don't correspond to equilibrium states. Okay, the final definition I want to give you with respect to uh, this particular uh, phase diagram is something called the solubility limit. And all that is is the maximum concentration of the solute that can be completely dissolved in a solvent. Right, so let's go back to our, our diagram here. What that means is that, let's say at 20 degrees again, the solubility limit, how much concentration of our solute, which is sugar, can be dissolved in our solvent water, well, it's 65 weight percent, right? So as a result, this line actually represents the solubility limit, okay? So that line is the solubility limit for uh, this particular uh, system, okay? So this is a, this is a two-component system, right? We have water and sugar. Um, we'll talk more about two-component systems in the next lecture, but I want to take a step back and talk about a unary phase diagram, which is a one-component system phase diagram, okay? The classic example of a unary phase diagram is the water phase diagram. And so in contrast to the, the two-phase where we had composition on the x-axis and temperature on the, the y-axis, in a unary phase diagram, typically we have temperature on the x-axis and pressure on the y-axis. So those are our quantities that we can vary. Um, you can see that, so let's, let's think about this. We're at one atmosphere, right? So let's see if this corresponds to what we think. If, if we say, well, wh when does, so we go going from here, we go, let's move up in temperature. Uh, we're in solid, the solid ice phase. We hit this line, this line sits at right about zero degrees C, and then we move to liquid water, right? So we melt, right? So that, that corresponds to what we know. If we zoom up, right there we cross again from liquid water now to vapor steam at 100 degrees C. So that, that, that's, that's what we know from our, our, uh, our experience just in life. Um, these lines represent what we'll call phase boundaries, okay? Um, and at these phase boundaries, so in this case, the liquid, the liquid uh, uh, vapor phase boundary, if you're on this boundary, both phases can exist simultaneously. Okay, and you'll notice that there's this point where the, all these phase boundaries come together at a point, and at this point, both solid, liquid, and vapor can exist simultaneously, but there's no um, degrees of freedom, right? We're stuck there at this pressure and temperature. That point is called the triple point. Okay, so these are just, uh, like I say, basic definitions, a, a very brief introduction to 
um, phase diagrams and some of the terminology that you're going to see uh, as we move forward.